Hello and welcome to the fourth video of Programming System Dynamics Model with Python. Today, we will program a model of drug dosage in human body. This model is a very simple pharmacokinetics based on what we learned earlier. Before we learn to program simulation, let's begin with the main purpose of this model. We want to model metabolism of a drug in a human body with considering these major factors on making assumptions. The first factor is how a body process a drug, for example, how the drug is ingested and absorbed. And the second is concentration change in the drug that will be the main tools in the modeling process and the last is how the body eliminates the drugs. For a starter, we want to keep things as simple as possible while evaluating the results. As a starter, we want to keep it simple by defining strict and general assumptions for the model. We call this model as one compartment model and its assumptions are human body as one homogeneous compartment so the distribution is instantaneous and the second is the amount of drug in the system is proportional to drug dosages and the third is drug elimination rate are proportional to the amount of drug in the system. For this model, the main interest is to keep track of drug amounts and concentration over time in the body. So the main variables here is the Q, the drug amount with the quantity of gram. The second variable is drug's half-life. That is the time it takes to make the amount of drug to half of the original amount of drug. And the quantity is in second. The third variable is plasma. The drug is dissolved in plasma. That is body fluid containing blood cells. So we want to use its volume in equation. Usually, we keep track of the drug concentration in plasma rather than its amount. Because we interested it to keep the concentration to be effective and not giving toxic effect for the body. We want the drug concentration to be higher than MEC or the minimum effective concentration and lower than MTC, that is the minimum toxic concentration. By the model assumption, the drug amounts could be modeled as a decay phenomenon, so the equation will be like this. The half-life definition are used to calculate the constant k with substituting q at half-life is half of q at zero. With assuming the drug immediately available in the plasma, the diagram will be similar to decay phenomenon we discussed in the first video. So here is the diagram and let's start to solve the finite difference equation to become the foundation of our program. The finite difference is equal to old value plus change in value. So in this case, it is drug amount after is equal to drug amount before minus elimination. Now start writing in programming terms by solving the equation so that the drug amount in iteration i plus 1 is equal to drug amount in iteration i minus elimination constant times drug amount in iteration 1 times delta t and the plasma concentration is the drug amount divided by the plasma volume. Now, let's start to write down our code. I have imported the NumPy and Matplotlib package as usual. And let's say we want to simulate the aspirin concentration for 8 hours using this information. The dosage is 2 tablets of 325 milligrams and the half-life of aspirin is 3.2 hours. The plasma volume, let's assume in the normal human body, it's 3 liters. Let's start by initializing the variables. The simulation length is 8 as in 8 hours and we use delta t is 0 0.01 and the number of iteration is simulation length divided by delta t. And here is 
the variables we know in the problem and let's create a numpy array drop in plasma and the initial drop in plasma is 2 times 325 and the plasma concentration is drop in plasma divided by plasma volume and as usual x-axis is to create the plot let's run this initializing variables and let's run this code this code is the finite difference method we saw earlier and let's create the plot so here is the plot of one compartment model for aspirin it looks like a decay phenomenon because the elimination rate is proportional to the amount of drugs in body. We can improve the model by refining the assumptions, as the previous model are our first attempt at using less complex assumptions. Now, let's assume that the drug does not immediately absorb in the plasma. We draw more variables in the diagram and now we add the process in drug amount change, named ingested. These variables calculate the amount of drug that absorbed and is affected by absorption fraction. And if the fraction is only half, then only half of the drug amount absorbed into plasma. Also, we need to know the dosage and start time, that is the first or initial time the drug is being ingested in the body. And interval time is the time interval between dosage. Also, note that we want the drug concentration is higher than MEC and lower than MTC. Let's start to program this diagram in Google Code. So here is the implementation of the second model diagram. Let's say we want to simulate a dilantin as a treatment for epilepsy which must be taken on a regular basis. Assuming the drug does not immediately absorb in the plasma, we want to simulate the aspirin concentration for a week using this information. The dosage is one 100 mg capsule 3 times daily and the effective serum blood level is 10 to 20 micrograms. And the average half-life of dilantin is 22 hours and the plasma volume let's assume it's 3 liters let's initialize the variables the simulation length is 168 hours and use the same delta t and let's define the interval that is 8 hours because it is taken three times a day and mec is 10 and MTC is 20. For the other variables, it's the same as we did earlier with one compartment model. And we define a new variable. Here is the absorption fraction that is 0 0.12. So let's run this code. So here are the programs. The difference is if the iteration reach the 8 or 16 or so on hours, we want it to add the new dosage, that is the hours is divided by interval, we want it to absorb a new dosage and add the dosage in the plasma. So let's run this code. And let's start to create the plot. Here is the horizontal line that is the MTC and the MC, MEC. And here are the results. But for one compartment model for Dalentin with multiple dose, see that after 36 hours, the Dalentin dosage in the body reached the minimum effective concentration and after that it will be between the MEC and MTC and that's all for now let's discuss further in comment section if you're interested and it would be awesome if you would support the channel by clicking likes and subscribe button see you in the next videos